السلام علیکم گیس Ramadan, it happens every year mate, and every year there's lectures on it. And what's really amazing is that every year I manage to hear a lecture on Ramadan from a totally different angle. Now, what I'm about to tell you now, in all my years of fasting, I've never heard this before. Never. And it's very useful, especially if you're going to schools and at work, because you can explain fasting using this knowledge. Now, we all know that all the major religions advocate fasting and encourage it and practice upon it as well. But what's quite interesting is it doesn't stop there. Leonardo da Vinci, the famous sculpturer and painter, fasted himself and advocated it for others as well. You've got Confucius, the famous Chinese philosopher, who also practiced it and advocated it as well. You've got Indian yogis, Native Americans, and of course Gandhi, who practiced it as well. Not impressed? There's more. Anyone who's ever touched a maths book has heard of Pythagoras. He's famous for triangles. Not the Illuminati kind. He lived for about a hundred years, which is a miracle considering in those days they didn't have all this technology and all this modern day medicine. Maybe that's why he lived for so long. There's a lot of talk of students who have got exams coming up and they're not fasting, but Pythagoras had an exam in the University of Alexandria. So he fasted for 40 days just for the exam. Not only that, but when he started accepting students, one of his conditions for students was they had to fast for 40 days. Hippocrates, who many consider is the father of modern day medicine, he also advocated and practiced fasting as well. You got Plato and Socrates, who are considered fathers of modern day philosophy. They also fasted for 10 days at a time for mental and physical efficiency. And this has also been backed up by modern day research as well. Now what's crazy is because this has now been associated with Islam, it's always looked upon as something suspicious. Hey, why, why are you guys fasting? In the modern day lifestyle, it's not within the interests of pharmaceutical companies to tell you to stop eating because a lot of the diseases that we get is from overeating. So you're not going to hear this from pharmaceutical companies because hey, let's face it, if you're not eating, you're healthy. And if you're healthy, you're not buying pills. And that's a problem if you're in the trade of selling pills. Got this book here, this giant beast of a book called The Compendium. Got that right. It's by Ibn Rajab al-Hambali. So I'm just gonna read from the chapter called A Full Belly. That's right. So he's got some narrations from Taba Tabi'in. Muhammad ibn Wasi said, whoever eats little food, understands, makes others to understand, becomes pure and clear in his being, and becomes soft-hearted. A great deal of food makes a person heavy and keeps him back from much of what he intends. And also before I leave, I've started raising money for Gambia again. You guys, mashallah, smashed it last year. We're doing that again. Now this time guys, it's the 3K challenge. Yeah, we've got to raise 3000 pounds before the end of Ramadan. Who's with me guys? If you don't know about the Gambia project, I'm going to link it at the end of the video. You guys can see the vlog and inshallah it will be super duper. Until next time guys, Assalamu Alaikum.